Dior, and I was just warming up there with some soloing, trading eights with myself. That's something I do on a daily basis. I'll put on the metronome. There we had the tempo at uh, 260 equals a quarter note. And I'll vary my tempos from slow to fast. And I'll just play for like 15 minutes. I'll solo. Uh, sometimes I'll solo free form, but always with the metronome. In other words, the time's going. I might be playing some pretty outside stuff, but that time's going. And there you saw I had the click with the metronome on two and four. That's really important when you're practicing jazz. You need to feel it on two and four. Don't put it on one and three or all four. Two and four. Now, if you're playing really slowly, like 60, so here. Then it would be okay to put it on all quarters. It's kind of rare that you trade fours at that tempo or eights or anything else, but it does happen, so you should practice slowly. So I would say practice anywhere from quarter note equals 60 to quarter note equals 350, which is very fast. And we'll do some of that uh, at the end. We'll play some fast soloing. So today we're going to talk about some different ways that I work on playing solos. And one of the things you can really do to make your soloing better is learn your rudiments. Learn techniques like flams, drags, roughs, paradiddles, rattamacues. In those eights I just played, I was trying to play a lot of that kind of stuff. Flams, rattamacues, drags, uh, flam accents, even play some Swiss triplets. So there's lots of ways you can use rudiments around the kit. And if you watch some of my other videos on rudiments, you'll see that I explain a lot of that, okay? So please always work on that stuff. That's your vocabulary. Now, one of the things you can do to expand your vocabulary after you learn your rudiments is to try different stickings around the drums. And to do this, I use rhythms in my book. Uh, as you've seen, I'm sure you all know this book. Put a picture of it up there. <clears throat> so there's uh, several rhythms in here that work uh, really well for soloing. The first thing we'll look at is page seven, and we're gonna uh, drop the tempo down quite a bit so you, everybody can get a grasp on this. So we'll drop it down to 80, and I'm gonna show you how to interpret page seven, as you see there on your screen, as triplets. So what we wanna do is we wanna swing these 16ths I've already done a few videos on this. If you watch my first jazz coordination video, I go into great detail about how to do this. I don't talk about soloing, but I talk about how to interpret these rhythms as triplets. So one thing you can do is put your metronome on two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that was the first line, just played in a swung fashion, not straight, but swung. So instead of doing, okay, uh, actually I'll play that for you, 16th notes would be this. So. And triplets would be this. Okay, so you see there how I'm swinging it. Now that's a very, very useful technique because you can play that around the drums. So, one, two, one, two, three, four. And you would go through that page and any other rhythmic page you have written in sixteenths or even eighth notes and you can do that. Uh, you can also do it with the bass drum and the cymbal. That sounds like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. So that works really well, especially when you're playing a little faster. I'll play that for you a little faster so you can hear it. Let's say, uh, 240 equals the quarter note. One, two, one, two, three, four. 
So I play on the cymbals first and then the drums. Now every time I do it, I want to do it a little bit differently. So I improvise. Never do it the same way. It's not written out. Again, they're just rhythms as you see there on the page. If I was to write this out, it would be very tricky to read and you'd get probably frustrated and not want to do it. But this is the way to do, practice these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through as much of this page as I can get through for you with the metronome on 2 and 4. And we'll do it kind of a medium tempo like 200. All right? One. So I was playing as simple as I could, nothing fancy, but just most of the fill-ins, in other words, the notes that are not the written rhythms on the snare drum. Not all. I'm playing around at times at all. Now you might ask, what can I do with my bass drum? Well, you don't have to do anything with your bass drum right there, right? For now, you could leave it on all four, really quiet, like feathering, or just don't do anything for now. Then later on, you can substitute the bass drum. So. You see I'm using the bass drum like a tom, like to play those rhythms like I was doing with the tom toms, okay? And again, if you play the cymbals, you can reinforce the cymbals with that bass drum. Now, the other way to do these rhythms is much more difficult. If we go to page eight, you can separate these rhythms, in other words, between the hands and the bass drum. This is very tricky, but it's really part of the jazz language if you listen to Billy Joe Jones or, or Kenny Washington, who plays a lot like Philly Joe Jones, they use a lot of these up and down motions. We'll play a little of that for you. Um, page eight, let me, let me actually explain a little further so you know what's going on, and I'll do it without the clip. If I play the metronome here, one, two, one, two, three, four. That's the first bar. So if I want to go up and down, that's what I call it, snare, bass, snare, bass, snare, bass, snare, bass. Okay, so that's the way to practice it. Let's do a couple more measures. One, two, one, two, three, four. And you got to swing it, all right? And that's the way I would suggest practicing all of these rhythms. Now, they work best, obviously, with two note or three note rhythms. So pages eight, pages nine, and then several pages in the back of the book work great with these rhythms. What you can do is swing these. So you put your metronome on two and four. So one, two, one, two, three,
faster. Sounds like this. One, two, one, three, four. so forth okay so these are terrific for developing that hand and foot thing now going on you can go on to the next one with the two bass drum notes one two one two three four <laughs> it's a lot more challenging now remember we're doing these in a swing feel i did another video where i talked about playing these straight Okay, the hand foot coronation video. You can look that up. I play them all straight, like kind of a rock thing, but this is swung. And then the page, the same thing for page one to 22. And then 123, they're broken. So this is much more difficult. And you would play these as written. So it'd be. Now what I would suggest is playing four bars at a time and then playing the solo. In other words, like each four bars of this etude on page 123 would be your four bar solo. So let's say we uh, put the metronome, uh, maybe 180, that's good. One, two, one, two. there I'm really kind of playing with sort of a lazy almost second line feel like that's called stretching so we're stretching that triplet so it doesn't sound so let's say classical all right now you can do that uh, uh, really effectively I'll give you a demo of that let's put it at the same tempo I'll just improvise one two one two So there I was trading eights, but I was stretching the triplet. It's very funky. Really uh, good drummers who do that are Bill Stewart. Antonio Sanchez does that quite a bit. Uh, very effective, okay? Those, and Jeff Watts obviously does lots of that. So that's the way you want to practice these hand foot things. Don't try to do them metronomically, please. They'll sound stupid <laughs> when you play, all right? And remember, this is improvisation. This is your solo. In other words, you have control over what you do, and it's your solo. No one can tell you how to play. But it should sound good, and it should swing. Now let's talk a little about musicality when you're playing uh, solos. There's lots of things that you can do that uh, horn players and piano players use. So if you take a motif like... <laughs> a motif when you have a little idea there it's very simple it's a little four stroke idea and you could take that and turn it around that's called retrograde when you play stuff backwards 
all right? And then also you can do permutations. In other words, you can move the rhythm over like this. There I'm playing it in groups of five, okay? So the sky's the limit, but those are improvisational techniques that lots of horn players, piano players use. So if you listen to those things, uh, you want to play like a horn player, melodically. These drums, I've tuned them. I've tuned them kind of a chord, so when you turn your snare off, it becomes a four note chord. good together and that's what you want to do when you tune them especially if you're going to be doing a lot of solo all right good now finally we're going to talk about uh, a little bit soloing with brushes so this is very common especially if you play a lot of soft gigs like I do so one thing you can do when you're soloing with brushes is you can turn the snares off uh, that's effective, so uh, you know you're not getting a lot of that snare buzz. So, I first saw Tony Williams do that at the Village Vanguard when I was probably about 19 years old. I would go down there and see him and Ron Carter and Herbie Hancock. Uh, they had just come out with a record called Third Plane, I believe it was called. I don't even know if it's still in print. Great record. But they were playing trio, and man, it was insane. And I got the great corner uh, booth seat because I got there early. And so that's like I was right behind Herbie the whole time. And Tony, you know, Tony played really loud. I mean, I saw him dozens of times everywhere from big concert halls to small clubs. And that night, for some reason, he was just playing so quiet and playing a lot of brushes. You don't get to see Tony play brushes. But one thing he did that I thought was so cool was that he turned the snares off a lot, especially when he played brushes for the whole tune, not just for soloing. So I, I just, that, that one night is in my head forever and I remember that. And his soloing was always amazing. And when Tony Williams solos, he does a lot of cool things with singles. So he treats the brushes a lot like sticks. But when you're sewing with brushes, you have a lot of other options, okay? So you can do this kind of motion. This kind of motion. Those are little tricks you can use. Now I'll do, uh, I've done lots of brush videos, maybe five or six, and I put them on YouTube. I would say watch those, but I'm going to try to do a special uh, video on brush soloing because we're about running out of time here. My camera's about to shut off. So I'll just play a little until the camera shuts off and uh, hope you enjoy this and have a great day. <laughs>